Draw Remix is a mod for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate that aims to create a faster paced, deeper gameplay experience by changing the system mechanics and altering characters. This video aims to be a guide for the general and universal techniques included in HDR that are not in the base game or at the very least act differently from the base game. Draw Remix is in active development, so the techniques featured in this video, the methods of performing them, and the characters that are able to perform them are all subject to change. This video is made using the version 0.25.2 beta. Some of the video may be outdated in future updates and new mechanics might be added or brought back from older titles. Dash dancing is a movement technique aimed at making spacing ambiguous while keeping you mobile and hard to hit. When you tap the stick forwards, you'll get what's called your initial dash. Holding forwards will then continue into your normal run animation. You can tap the stick backwards quickly during your initial dash to get a second initial dash without triggering a lengthy turnaround animation. Chaining initial dashes is the core principle of dash dancing. Since you have the entire duration of your initial dash to turn around, you can alternate the timing of dash dances to bias your dash dance into one direction. One thing to note is that different characters will have different initial dash lengths and speeds, so make sure you practice with your favorite characters. Wave dashing is an extremely useful movement tool that allows you to reposition your character precisely while maintaining an actionable state. This can be performed by using a directional air dodge to land on the ground after a jump. A wave land is when your character starts out already airborne and then dodges to the ground or a platform. And a wave dash is when you jump and then immediately air dodge to the ground. A ledge dash is when you wave land onto the stage after holding onto the ledge. The horizontal speed of the air dodge is maintained when you land, so the angle you hold the analog stick determines how far you slide. HDR has implemented the ability to wave dash while holding completely horizontal on the analog stick, or wave land on platforms while air dodging upwards. Pivots are a micro-movement option that allows you to quickly move a very short distance while maintaining complete action ability. This can be used to outspace an opponent's approach, quickly close a gap to maintain pressure, or to extend combos. This can be performed by flicking the control stick backwards during your initial dash. If the control stick returns to a neutral position quickly after you flick backwards, your character will not enter an initial dash and instead enter a turnaround animation. If your character enters another initial dash instead of a pivot, then you're holding the flick backwards for too long. This technique is precise, so don't be disheartened if you don't get it right away. In the current version of HDR, if you pivot within the first three frames, you will get what's called a perfect pivot. Instead of instantly stopping, like melee style pivots, you will slide a bit, like pivots in Smash 4. Grabs are an integral part of many characters' neutral and punish game. In Super Smash Bros. there are three types of grabs. Standing grab, dash grab, and pivot grab. Each type has its own strengths and weaknesses. Standing grab, for example, has the lowest range but is the fastest and usually safest grab. The main issue is that you can't normally access standing grab while moving. However, if you press the jump button and then press the grab button in the small time frame before you leave the ground, your character will perform a standing grab even while moving. This can let you retain more momentum while grabbing while still maintaining relative safety. Dacus is an acronym for Dash Attack Cancelled Up Smash and is a technique originally discovered in Brawl. In HDR, you can also cancel a dash attack into a down smash. This technique can be used in two ways. Firstly, to give your smash attack the momentum of your dash attack, and secondly, as a way to combo from your dash attack into a smash attack. The dash attack can be cancelled at any time before its 10th frame of animation, so as long as the dash attack hitbox is frame 9 or faster, you can combo them together. 
Comboing a dash attack into a smash attack with this technique is commonly referred to as a Gatling. The smash attack can be performed in multiple ways. HDR will cancel your dash attack as long as you input up or down smash, up or down tilt, and up or down plus the grab button within the time window. My recommended method is using the grab button or assigning an attack button to one of the shoulder buttons so that you can use the C-Stick to start your dash attack. Attack cancelling is a technique that is native to ultimate, but I included it on this list because it works very differently in HDR. Firstly, the window for an attack cancel is much narrower than in ultimate, due to changes in general movement. Secondly, some character states are locked out of attack cancelling. For example, in HDR it is no longer possible to attack cancel a smash attack if the smash attack was cancelled into from a Dacus. For more information about attack cancelling, refer to this video. It goes into more detail on execution and use cases. The final thing that sets attack cancelling apart from an ultimate is that you are able to short hop and full hop an attack cancel. Slide tossing is a technique that allows you to slide with a lot of speed when you throw an item. It can be used as a burst option to cover yourself with an item while you approach, as a way to retreat while throwing an item, and as a tool to set up traps and control space. It is performed by rolling with an item in hand and during the startup of the roll, tossing the item in any direction. If your character rolls without throwing the item, you likely did not input the item toss fast enough. I recommend using the C-Stick to throw the item as it allows for rolling and throwing in different directions to make the technique easier. On some characters, you can even catch the item right after throwing it to chain glide tosses for some crazy movement. The timing and distances of glide tosses vary between characters, so make sure you play with your favorite character to practice the timings. Aerial glide tossing is a lot like regular glide tossing, the main difference being that you are canceling an air dodge with an item toss instead of a roll. This works with any direction air dodge and any direction item toss, but it cannot be performed with a Z drop. Its use cases are similar to normal glide tossing, but it can also be used to aid in recovery by air dodging straight up. It's useful to know that you still keep your air dodge if you do an aerial glide toss. Shield dropping is a technique that has been in every Smash Brothers game except for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. It is a technique that allows you to pass through a platform while shielding. The most notable application for this technique is to quickly punish your opponent for hitting your shield from below. In HDR, there are multiple ways to do this. The way you perform it in older titles still works, by holding shield and then tilting downwards on the analog stick. The timing for this method is pretty tricky, however. Too slow and you only tilt your shield. Too fast and you spot dodge. You can circumvent this issue pretty easily, however. By holding shield and the special button, or by holding two shield buttons, your character is no longer able to roll or spot dodge, letting you tap down to pass through platforms much easier. It's worth noting that not every character is able to do the shield plus special method. Another way to perform a shield drop is by pressing the taunt button while shielding on a platform. No down press needed. One bug with this method is that since taunt is also bound to footstools, sometimes you'll buffer a footstool out of the shield drop. If you're more familiar with the axe method of shield dropping, that works here too. One of the biggest limiting factors to which moves will work in a combo is the ending lag of an attack. Sometimes the gap between the attacks is too large and gives the opponent a chance to escape. Edge cancelling is a technique to completely bypass the end lag of certain attacks. Most characters can edge cancel their aerials by using an aerial attack, then landing near the edge of a platform or the stage, and then sliding off using their current momentum. Once you slide off, your character will be completely actionable in the air. This technique also works with some special moves and can be even used as a movement option. You can also cancel the lag of aerial attacks by landing right next to the ledge and not completely sliding off. 
This is called a teeter cancel because it cancels into your character's teeter animation. You can also cancel your character's taunting animations by sliding off the ledge. This isn't useful, but it is cool. Moonwalking is admittedly not that useful, but it is a very flashy way to move around. This technique allows your character to do a dash while moving in the wrong direction. It can be performed by first dashing in one direction and then immediately rolling the control stick to the opposite direction without passing through neutral. It doesn't matter if you go through the top or the bottom though, so the most common method is to do a quick half circle motion with the analog stick. You get more speed from a moonwalk if you start with a bit of momentum, which you can get from walking, wave dashing, or chaining off of another moonwalk. Sticky walking is an even less practical extension of moonwalking, which makes it that much cooler when used well. To start, you need to first initiate a moonwalk. After you start your moonwalk, you want to roll the control stick back to the forward position, once again avoiding neutral. Once all is said and done, the input looks like one half circle back, then one half circle forward. You'll know you got it if your character freezes in place for a moment before accelerating forward. Rounding out the universal techniques is the sticky ledge run. This tech lets your character run while not falling off the edge of the stage. The main use is to be ready to go for an edge guard at a moment's notice. Doing this is relatively simple. All you need is for your character to be in their running animation, but at a low enough speed to not be able to run off. To do this easily, start a run and then move the control stick to a 45 degree angle. You can also move it into a 45 degree angle from the turnaround animation to give yourself a bit more time. When you want to run off the ledge, you just need to move your control stick forward. These next few techniques are not applicable to every character in the cast, but exist within enough characters that I feel they warrant an explanation. While the system mechanics that allow platform cancelling to happen are universal, not every character is able to perform this technique. If you hadn't seen this technique before, it looks like a character is performing an aerial attack while grounded on a platform. To perform a platform cancel is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is drop through a platform and then immediately hit your opponent with an aerial. Uh, okay. Please note that not every aerial can platform cancel. Also, fast falling makes this technique harder, or in some cases impossible. Platform canceling works because your character's environmental collision box, the object that tells the game if your character is touching the ground, shifts upwards a few frames after you're airborne. The hit lag of hitting an aerial attack keeps your character in place for a short period. So if the ECB shifts upward during that hit lag, your character will land back on the platform they just fell from. I don't know why it's doing that. Land cancels are a special property that certain special moves possess. Landing during a special move with this property cancels all end lag and makes the user actionable immediately. This technique is most often tied to projectiles. Land cancelling projectiles repeatedly can lead to new ways to open up opponents in neutral. It's worth noting that only some of these moves allow you to fast fall during the attack. This is another technique to cancel the end lag of an attack, this time by jumping afterwards. There's a bit more variability in how this technique is applied, however. Some characters, like the Spacies, can jump at any point during the attack. Some characters, like Ryu and Lucario, have to hit an opponent with the attack before they can jump out. Lucas is especially unique. He can jump out at any point after he releases the down special button. This technique is pretty similar to the previous two, but this time you're canceling a move with an air dodge. The application varies from character to character, but the main two uses are wave landing after using the attack to have less lag and be more mobile, 
or to use the air dodge to catch an item the attack spawns. The input is as simple as it sounds, just perform an air dodge with the proper timing and the attack will cancel into it. Shortening is a way to make your recovery less predictable by decreasing the distance it usually travels. A large number of recovery specials in HDR were given away to shorten. For the teleports and spacey side Bs, you shorten by pressing the special button again after starting the movement. For most other characters, you can shorten your recovery by pressing the shield button. Some characters can also end their recoveries early by pressing the attack button, but this method is pretty uncommon. Double jump cancelling is only performable with characters whose double jumps dip down at the beginning before they rise. Performing an aerial attack or special move during this downwards movement will cancel your double jump and make your character start falling immediately. The main way this is used is as a way to perform aerial attacks very low to the ground very quickly. It can be used to mix up movement in neutral, or as a way to extend combos. Some characters have the ability to maintain their vertical position in the air with a mechanic called float. One way to access a float is to press and hold the jump button, at which point your character will float at the peak of their jump. You can also choose to activate a float early by tapping down on the analog stick while still holding the jump button. Similar to double jump cancelling, this can be used to do aerial attacks low to the ground very quickly. It can also be used as a way to help recover to stage and stall on disadvantage. The duration of a float varies between characters, and if you are hit out of your float, you don't get it back until you touch the ground. There is a subcategory of floats called hovers. They function mostly the same, with the added benefit of being able to change your vertical position manually during the hover. A magic series is a mechanic that gives some characters the ability to cancel one attack with another attack, usually in a set order. Magic series are only given to a few characters. The way a magic series works is that each attack is given a priority, and you are able to cancel from any low priority move into any other move that has a higher priority. The characters will usually have different priority orders for different moves, but generally you can cancel weak moves into stronger ones. It's also worth noting that it's attack dependent whether or not it can be cancelled on block or only on hit. Thank you for watching, I hope this video has given you some idea on what techniques are available in HDR as well as how to perform them. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, it helps the algorithm and it shows me that people care. I've been uh, talking about this video for a while now, I'm sorry it took so long to come out. Uh, not only was it a bigger project, but uh, I am very bad at editing, so I had to learn a process to make it a little bit quicker. Uh, but now that I have that down, I'll try to put out more stuff. But other than that, um, thank you and have a nice day.